Is this a sign of the winter ahead? We've got snow going on right now and we're looking at the long range in this video. We're going to look at what's happening across the Arctic and how that's going to impact, I think, our next 30 days or so. There is a chance for more snow. And of course, we do have snow in the forecast in the short range. We're going to look at where that's going to be falling and how much you can expect. Let's begin with a really long look down the road. We're going to start with where we are right now, heading through the weekend. We've got this big trough swinging into the east, bringing below normal temperatures. Look at all of this blocking up across Greenland. It's no wonder we're seeing so much cold air dive south into the United States, into Canada. It's bringing wind, rain, and snow. Across the west, a much different story. Warmer temperatures pumping north with this big ridge building across the southwest. The weather pattern is going to certainly change as we head through this week. It's going to stay cool across the northeast, the Great Lakes, and the parts of the mid-Atlantic. But eventually, we will start to see that lift out, and we're watching our next storm that's going to move into the west. Looking long range, it looks like sometime Thursday into Friday. Now, there were some questions. Does this thing amplify? Does it connect with this upper trough? The latest guidance separates these two. When that happens, you're dealing with a weaker storm that's moving into the southwest. That's also going to impact what happens with it once it moves east of the mountains. Does it ramp up? At this point, I just don't see it happening. My confidence is lessening a little bit. A lot of blocking across Greenland. I want you to take note of this as we look really long range into next weekend. I think it starts to get cold across Europe. I'm talking about this because what happens in Europe, usually you'll start to see this blocking pattern take shape. It turns cold over here into this part of the world. And then usually within the week or two, you start to see another cold blast down into the lower 48. Will it happen this time? I don't know. It's a little bit early in the season. The MJO is in a favorable phase. We're not going to get into all those teleconnections, but I think the long range outlook is picking up on something. You've got this ridging building across the east. There's your storminess across the west as we wrap up the month. And then as we head into December, I still think it turns cold again in the east, also into parts of central Canada and the central U.S. With everything kind of pulling in out of the northwest with this type of outlook, I think it gets stormy across the Pacific Northwest as well. And your 30-day snow totals taking you through December. I mean, this uses so many different members. Clearly, snow is not out of the picture across the lower 48 in Canada. Let's take a wide view of North America now and the precipitation over the next week or so. We've got our clipper system driving through the central plains down into parts of the Midwest. It's bringing some rain, also some snow, and it'll be interesting to watch Chicago where there are winter storm watches out right now for heavy lake effect snow behind the system as these winds just how straight from the Arctic all the way down to the Gulf Coast, crossing the open waters of the Great Lakes. And I think it's going to deposit a lot of snow downwind of the Great Lakes. Windy, too, all the way into the deep south with temperatures dropping dramatically as we head into Monday with wind, rain to snow behind the system. It's going to exit pretty quickly. We're going to dig into those snow totals again in just a second. But overall, quieting down some not as cold across the south these temperatures will modify underneath quite a bit of sunshine high pressure settling in and the wind and the snow starts to settle down across the northeast some however look how the lake effect holds on potentially until saturday in some areas i don't know that it holds on that long but a pretty wild look with a couple of reinforcing shots of cold air keeping it going and it might change the trajectories a little bit too once we get into next weekend you know what happens with this western system a lot of questions still, but another system showing up on the overnight GFS here into the northeast trying to show some snow. That's actually the early morning run. This is the overnight run, which was more robust. Are we looking at a northeast snowstorm next weekend? More to come on that. Let's talk about where we are right now with the snow totals. Here's a wide look taking you through Tuesday. A little bit closer of a look into the east first, and then we'll work our way west. Enjoy the warmth while it lasts across the mid-Atlantic. These temperatures are going to drop so much as we head through the weekend. 20s, 30s, and 40s are on the way. We'll be in the 60s and 70s again tomorrow, especially here into the Piedmont of North Carolina and down into Virginia. Georgia could be in the 80s, especially towards Macon. Goodbye to that as we head into Monday as that front pushes all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Macon, your highs will barely get to 50. Precipitation-wise, a few showers across parts of Pennsylvania and New York, and that rain will start to increase as we head into late Saturday night into Sunday, and the cold air is right behind it, rain to snow across parts of Michigan. It looked like a heavier band a couple of days ago was going to try to set up across southern Michigan. That doesn't look as favorable now. We are going to see some snow here, though, and then that moves into parts of Ontario. The overnight European a little bit lighter, too, on the snow north of Toronto, but it does turn things over to snow here across southeast Canada up towards Quebec. Some of this snow up in here is starting to look a little bit heavier, and I want to show you what the overnight European is doing. I think this is a really interesting look. Look at these wind fields. 
starting to veer just a little bit with this upper low, your high pressure moving in from the north. It pulls that cold air right off the lake into Chicago, into northeast Illinois. That puts some heavy snow here, and then eventually it starts to curve back out of the northwest, depositing some snow on the east side of Lake Michigan. This cold pocket of air also headed toward the southern Appalachians, the Cumberland Plateau. It's going to bring some snow, a couple of inches, I think, especially into the higher elevations. And this pocket of cold air may persist enough to put a few rain and flakes of snow mixing in into parts of the Piedmont and in, uh, of North Carolina down into Virginia. I don't know that we see it in South Carolina, but either way, cold weather on the way and then the snow lingers downwind of Lake Erie. We start to shut it down here across Lake Michigan as we start to see higher heights build in, warmer temperatures aloft. And then as we move into Wednesday, that lake effect snow again picking up here into the northeast as our next system swings through. Notice more rain mixing here because with temperatures on the way back up, we could see more of a rain snow mix versus an all snow that we're going to see like with this system that's moving through. This is the numbers from the National Weather Service. That's why we're not seeing Canadian numbers. I want to turn that back on in just a second. But I want to show you how in Chicago the numbers are much lower than what the European runs is showing. This is picking up on that veering out of the northeast. And that confidence is growing so much that winter storm watches are out, including Chicago, all the way over to South Bend. As that wind starts to veer in out of the north and east, we could be looking at some significant snow, and it may actually extend a little bit further to the south. There are also a few winter weather advisories across Iowa and then up here into parts of Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan as that wind picks up off the lake and we get the lake effect snow going. We'll likely see more advisories come out as the confidence grows and we get closer in time. But yeah, the European has been really interesting with this snow band and also this one off of Lake Michigan with a couple of inches also up here into the UP further to the south. A coating at best across parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, especially into the higher elevations. But get into the Smokies, get into the Blue Ridge, specifically right here from Grayson County, south down here into western North Carolina couple of inches possible and then right along the border of West Virginia where you get some elevation up here near Bluefield, up near Beckley, Flat Top, Snowshoe, Canaan Valley, especially up here towards Snowshoe and Canaan Valley into the highest elevations of Northeast West Virginia. Some heavy snow coming out of this type of setup. And then here's the snow further to the north and east out of Northeast Ohio. A couple of inches possible downwind of Lake Erie from Cleveland up to Erie. I think you got to get away from the water, though. You get a little bit of elevation here just south of town, and that's going to be your best chance for snow. Same could be set up towards Dunkirk, maybe right along the lake, but get down a little bit away from the water. Jamestown, some snow, and then notice how the European is picking up on some heavier bands just to the, well, almost right across Buffalo. Really interesting to see this. So from Syracuse, Rochester, some snow out of this Syracuse, and then across Southern parts of Ontario, Hamilton even getting in on the action with a little bit of snow. It's not as heavy as it looked maybe yesterday, but it's it's here. And then we start to really see that intense snow, I think, at least the best chance for snow in t to Quebec. As our low wraps up and you get uh, that synoptic type snow building. Behind our system, cold northwest winds will keep the snow showers going into the mountains of the northeast. Also into Maine, maybe not as heavy here, but look at what's going to happen as we take this out through next weekend. Multiple chances for snow, I think. You saw that rain-snow mix here into the northeast. And further to the west, we're kind of getting rid of what's happening here. This is sliding to the south relatively quickly. See, this is what's happening through Saturday. More snow way up into the northern parts of Canada. As we build the snowpack, as we head toward winter, that's going to help with the cold air if you're hoping for more cold air. I know it's a divisive subject, but uh, yeah, we're seeing that happen. It's taking place even though we have a big warm-up on the way for a lot of the lower 48 in the coming days. Across the central U.S., relatively quiet. Now, it depends on where you are, right? If you're further east, you're going to get cold. The further west you go, the warmer you're going to be. Quite a bit of sunshine this week. Beautiful temperatures, too. We'll be back up into the 60s and 70s in many areas, especially as we get into the middle part of the week. Kind of cold, though. Sunday into Monday. I mean, Monday morning could be quite chilly all the way down into Arkansas with lows in the 20s. We start to see that warmth take shape, though, by Monday. You're seeing it downwind of the mountains, highs in the 60s, close to 70. And then as we move into Tuesday, that warmth rapidly spreads east. So we're up into the mid 60s from Kansas down into Oklahoma. I mean, even Nebraska climbing up into the mid 60s and the warmth spreads a little bit further to the east. The south starts to recover some. We're back up into the 60s. Still kind of cool, though. All right, to the northwest we go with a little bit of rain and snow sliding down through the Dakotas. That's about it. We're kind of dry. That cold Arctic air sliding east of the mountains across the west, though, relatively dry. We're going to stay quiet here until this system 
moves ashore sometime Thursday and Friday. That's going to pick the wind and the rain up across the west. Snow into the Sierra. It's going to be pretty high, though, with the southerly flow. But once this cold air aloft moves in, those snow levels will drop some. And this will be interesting to watch as it moves into Southern California next weekend. You know, the GFS, the European, they've both been showing something happening here in the southwest next weekend. I think it's going to happen in the short term, though. Very little, if any, snow on the way 